Welcome back to the Superstar Roundup. We are making our way through episodes 111 and 112 today, which I think are pretty much opposites of each other in terms of quality. So this should be pretty interesting to compare, and I really look forward to hearing what you guys thought of them too. So let's start with 111. I have to admit, this is incredibly hard to break down because frankly, I just don't know these guys well enough. This is supervised by Chihiro Tanaka from Studio One Pack, someone whose style I'm still not 100% sure on. Again, Yui Kinoshita used to head one pack episodes, and their style was really obvious, albeit not that great, whereas Tanaka has only taken the lead recently, and so there's not been much of a chance to really ascertain her style. Likewise, the second supervisor on this episode, Yasuhiro Namatame, is still incredibly new to the series. This is only his second episode as a primary supervisor, so there's just not enough evidence to really make any conclusive statements about his work. But ultimately, regardless of whether I know what they look like specifically or not, I can confidently say that there's nothing about this episode's visuals that actually stands out either way. There are some off-model but interesting shots of Hit, but on the whole this is a disappointing farewell to a fan-favourite character. In the first half, the most impressive bit of animation comes from Futoshi Higashide, someone who we haven't seen on the series since episode 106. His work here is fine, his action animation is nice enough, and of course his smoke always looks lovely when things are exploding, but after such a long time away from the series, I'd have hoped to have seen his work a little longer and a little more complex than what's on display here. We've seen Higashide put out better work in a shorter amount of time, so perhaps this was an intentional small contribution, and we'll see some better work in the forthcoming weeks. Unfortunately, I feel like that's perhaps a bit optimistic of me to say, and that's because of one other noteworthy animator's input on this episode. Yukihiro Yurata is here. This is his first time on the series since episode one. If you don't know Yurata, he's a hugely talented animator who's been doing fantastic work at Toei for years. His style's usually pretty loose, and he goes hand in hand with Tate quite nicely, and he did so back on One Piece. In this episode, that talent isn't really on display. He handles a small scene in the second half, essentially the moment where Hit is eliminated. The action is very fluid and the smoke effects are great, but even putting aside that this is clearly a conservative cut, the actual poses and gestures of the fight feel very awkward. He just produced some scenes for One Piece's new opening, so understandably this probably wasn't a priority. Either way, nobody's really delivering to the best of their abilities here. Even the director, Toshiaki Komura, who's pretty well regarded, didn't impress me much in terms of both the storyboard and the general direction of the episode. But as much as I've been negative throughout this entire video so far, this isn't a bad episode, and its quality is certainly not unexpected. After the colossal animation fest like the special, it's only natural to be hit by a bit of quality whiplash while things settle down and reset. If you remember the episode following 66, 66 of course being incredibly well animated much like the special, the show basically fell apart right after, and even before 66 things were starting to split at the seams. It's a very stark contrast to what we're seeing here. There was obviously a little bit of struggle leading up to the special as we saw in episodes like 106 but it's mostly been fine, and even here, 111, as much as it's one of the weaker episodes of the tournament, it's fine. It's not great, but it's not melting on my screen either. We are definitely a very far cry away from Kitano's 67. As we move into episode 112 now, it's really great to see the quality bounce right back up again. This is supervised by two guys from Toei Philippines, and of course, Toei in-house animator Koji Nashizawa. There's some great animation here, and we'll touch on that shortly, but I have to give major props to Naoto Shida, who storyboarded this episode. I mentioned in the staff announcements video that I had hoped Shida's boards would be much more in line with what he showed us on episode 95, where the composition of scenes felt distinctly him, rather than some of his bland contributions from earlier on in the series. Thankfully, he seems to be on a real hot streak right now. This episode is packed with camera work that really does just scream out, hey guys, Naoto Shishida boarded this, I'm here. There's of course the snaking beams from 95 that make their return, but what I find most interesting is the way in which Shida links cuts together. As Gohan is thrown into the rocks, there's no hard cut to Piccolo's fight like you might expect. Instead, they drop into the foreground seamlessly. It's a wonderful way of maintaining the flow of a fight, and it's something we saw in Shida's own key animation back in episode 57. 
Seven. This is some great work and thankfully we have the key animators to back things up too. Kenji Miyuma is the absolute star of this episode by a landslide. Since joining the series back in episode 66, again talking about episode 66, it feels like we've been building to this kind of output from him. This isn't his most complex work, but the sheer volume it is impressive, and especially the polish. In the first half, there's a wonderful scene where Piccolo fires back at one of the Universe 6 Namekians, and Miyuma's effects here feel like a great tease for what's to come from him. He's all about thick and sharp looking effects, you could probably take pieces of them and craft them into nice little RPG weapons if you really wanted. But before we make our way into the second half and watch Miyuma go wild, I want to point out the reuse of Kaba's kick attack from the Universe 6 arc opening. It's possibly redrawn by Chu Yong Sir here, but it was originally by Ken Otsuka. Much like the reuse of the current opening back in episode 102, this has worked seamlessly into the new content, so its inclusion doesn't really stick out in a particularly negative light. I'm always worried whenever they reuse scenes, so this is definitely nice to see. As we do hit that second half though, this is where Nashizawa's supervision takes over and the overall quality of the episode ramps up pretty heavily. Nashizawa's got a great angular style with hints of the old designs in there, the indented cheek shading being a pretty big component of that. Weirdly, he's at his best when it comes to complex designs, but as soon as he goes to tackle front on views, he kind of falls apart. Ears end up placed way too low down the face, and the features themselves tend to be kind of oddly positioned. It's a strange thing to struggle with, but considering his abilities elsewhere, I'm not too upset. The scene where Kaba turns Super Saiyan 2, for example, is just packed to the brim with wild drawings from him. I really, really love it. Back to Kenji Miyuma though, as Frieza attacks Kaba, he takes over, and this is where the absolute highlight of the episode begins. It's kind of funny really, even from Kaba's spit right at the beginning of the scene, you can tell that Miyuma's here. I mean, look at those shapes, he's just so distinctive. This of course goes into Kaba firing the Gallic gun and it shows off one of my favourite approaches to animation, where the drawing literally breaks down into a sketch to really emphasise the dynamism of the movement. It's a real rarity in Dragon Ball, but I think one of the most famous uses of it comes from Hisashi Eguchi, where Piccolo saves Gohan back in the Saiyan arc. It's just as cool here and it adds so much impact. Miyuma's gorgeous smoke follows up before Frieza sends beams flying at Kaba. The director's choice to create a handheld camera effect here does wonders of building unease before Miyuma sweeps in again with a colossal blast, once again really highlighting his ability to create such interesting shapes. This segment really feels like a masterclass in how to create hugely interesting and impressive scenes through what is essentially quite limited animation. Good storyboarding, impressive direction and interesting shapes are absolutely key here and they're ultimately what makes this episode so remarkable and memorable. I really can't put into words with just how happy I am that we found ourselves back on track after just one unremarkable episode. With Shimanuki up next week and Takahashi the week after, I'm anticipating a very very good month for Super, and hey, maybe I'll work out who's actually drawing these really lovely noses that keep popping up too. But that is it for today, once again there is a Q&A coming up later in the week so do be sure to leave a comment down below if you missed the video yesterday, if not, let me know what you thought of the episodes covered today, I'm always interested to hear how my thoughts line up with you guys, so do feel free to let me know. I always welcome healthy discussion in the comments down below as long as you're not shouting and fighting at each other, so keep being great. Be sure to rate the video, subscribe if you haven't, and of course, as always, I will see you next time.